were believing. It didn't come to pass, and now they're in captivity. They were ripped from their homes. They're stripped of their freedom. They're stripped of their dignity. They're stripped of their identity, and now they have to endure the grueling yoke of slavery. And so when they went in, the Bible tells us, they sat down and they were depressed. They were crying. As they remembered Zion, instead of the usual festive songs and uh, times of worship they used to enjoy, the Bible tells us they hung their hearts upon the wheels in the midst thereof. And their captors required of them a song saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And those who plundered us saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We're not happy about our situation. We can't sing praises unto God here. And it continues. They said, if I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I don't remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I don't exalt Jerusalem as my chief joy. And then verse 7 says, remember the Lord against the day of the sons of Edom. The day of Jerusalem when they was being taken captive and they were crying, raise it, raise it to its very foundation. Meaning, burn it down, burn it down, destroy it. This is their experience in going into captivity. Verse 8 says, O daughter of Zion, who are to be destroyed, as happy the one who repays you as you have served us. O daughter of Babylon, rather. And so they are calling curses on Babylon for destroying them, for taking them into captivity. Happy is the one who dashed the heads of their little ones against the rocks. Amen. Slavery, captivity is never a good thing. It's never a good experience. And all of us here would have learned about the transatlantic slave trade that our ancestors endured. How they were sold cheaply by their own, and how they were brutalized, they were raped, they were murdered, they were emasculated, they were stripped of their identity when they were taken to England, America, and various other parts of the world into slavery. It was nothing to be happy about. The experience was not a dignified one, it was much indignity. And so the Bible tells us they were sad, they were depressed, and for the next they were stuck in Babylonian captivity. And then that transition to the Medes and the Persians. But 126 gives us the other side of the story. Are you listening to it? 126 gives us the other side of the story and says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, when the Lord overturned the tables, you see what this is saying to us, brothers and sisters, is that we may experience some hardships. We may experience some enslaving circumstances, some bad moments, but they don't last forever. We may experience our symbolic 17 years of captivity where there is no joy, there is no singing, there is no shouting, there's no enjoying When it's filled with a lot of misery, a lot of pent up anger and stress and frustration, God will not leave you in that situation forever. The time had come for their deliverance. And the Bible says, when God turned back, He rescued them, He brought them back to Jerusalem. We were like those who were drinking. It was unbelievable. We can imagine in 1828 at the emancipation of slavery. The slaves were like those who took they can't believe the time had finally come. For several hundred years they were in slavery. Being brutalized and tortured. Being destroyed. No hope, no future. Being treated like wild animals. They were no better than the cattle in the boat. Of the masses, but God stepped in 
and reverse their situation. The Israelites said, we were like those who dream and our mouths were filled with laughter. Could not believe it. Nobody couldn't do it except the Lord. Tommy couldn't help them, but God did. 
Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. It is him who delivered from the enemy. Oh, 
God. Thank you, Jesus. God blesses your church. Yes, sir. You need to say, God, remember me to your church. Yes. Can I encourage someone? Glory to God. You need to remember Reed's friendship in my church. You need to remember Pastor So and So's church because they need the help to us. They need the blessing to us. You cannot allow yourself to stand up in your own.
And all those prayers have produced a great harvest. All of that enduring has paid off. All of that studying and faithfulness and, and pouring out of yourself to serve God and His people, it will pay off. All the hunger is going to be outdone. Somebody, including myself, mm. Mm. those who so intense and joy, they keep going out. Rain or shine, they're out there. Rain or shine, they're on the ground. Mm. Rain or shine, they put in the work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 
Jesus. You will. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Can you stand your feet with me mm. as we close? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Lord. My God. Mm. When I lost